We come together with our dreams, daring and devotion, as athletes leaping in motion, and artists is launching a moment. We are the advocates leading this black history movement. We are the new generation. Watch us rise. Hello everyone and welcome to KREX TV honoring Black History, Mind, Body and Soul. I'm Cora Dickey. We kicked off our special moments ago with the sounds of the Sons of Serendip who stopped by our studios for a live performance. We're also happy to reintroduce you throughout this show to our eight-year-old Happy Headlines reader, Lyric. Lyric will be reciting some unforgettable lines from legendary poets Maya Angelou and Amanda Gorman. To get started, we have to go all the way back to the Civil War where the Buffalo Soldiers first earned their name. Just south of Montrose sits a sign you may have passed a hundred times. Jocelyn Stafford traveled to the site and fills you in on some little known history the marker fails to mention. The Buffalo Soldiers, some of the U.S. Army's most courageous fighters, but not often recognized for their efforts. People expected them to fail or expected them to not perform to high standards, so they use that as motivation. A year after the Civil War, Congress elected for black soldiers that wished to remain in the U.S. Army to be put into six new units. These all-black cavalry regiments soon became known as the Buffalo Soldiers. Their nickname likely originating from their Native American enemies, referring to their curly hair. The soldiers accepted this name with great honor, knowing the Native American tribes would only give it to a respected enemy. They took it as a badge of pride. According to former curator of Montrose County Historical Museum, Marilyn Cox, Ute Chief Colorow and his band occupied a town that we now know as Aletha, until the tribe was later removed to Fort Duchesne, Utah. But in the summer of 1887, Chief Colorow and his men returned to Colorado to hunt. The group was strongly disliked there, and the Colorado governor called out the state militia to punish the Utes. Chief Colorow and his men were chased all the way back into Utah. But once the militia prepared to attack, they were met by a group of 10 Buffalo soldiers from Fort Duchesne. It was at this point the tribe found a new perspective on the Buffalo soldiers that saved their lives. The new bond even went on to save Indian agents from a possible train robbery in 1898. The train was going through Utah with the U.S. government's annual payment of $30,000 to the Utes. Once the thieves saw the Indians being escorted by a large group of Buffalo soldiers, they changed their plans. In a time of discrimination and segregation, the Buffalo soldiers overcame all obstacles to become some of the greatest fighters our country has ever known. Now the marker is located along Highway 50 south of Montrose, but the land is private. Though the sign notably leaves out the Buffalo Soldiers, the site remains an intriguing glimpse into the incredible piece of Colorado's black history. As we honor black history in western Colorado, we also honor the legendary cowboy Charlie Glass. He came to Colorado in the 1920s and left behind a legacy that continues to stand the test of time. The common trope used throughout history paints cowboys as white gunslingers. While some fit that mold, there were many more who didn't. Take the legendary Charlie Glass, for example, a black cowboy from our own backyard who historians describe as larger than life. The legends surrounding him, his skill at his profession, the mystique that followed him, larger than life is definitely uh, the best way to describe Glass. He first came to Colorado in the early 1900s. He was believed to have grown up in Native American territory and left his home after allegedly killing the man who killed his father. In 1917, Glass began working for the well-known cattleman Oscar L. Turner and would go on to become the foreman. He was a hard-working man, respected in the community and infamous for his many other talents. He was regarded as being not just an excellent rancher, but he was a great shot with his uh, six-shooter. He was known to do quite a bit of, of trick shooting. He was known to be extremely talented with a lasso and would do roping tricks in, in addition to needing to do those skills for the job. These skills were on display as Glass was a regular competitor in Fruta's annual Cowpunchers reunion and said to be a crowd favorite. 
but the charismatic character's life wasn't all sunshine. In 1921, Glass shot and killed a man. At the time, a great deal of contention erupted between sheep herders and cattlemen over rangeland for their livestock, also known as the Sheep Wars. Bass sheep herder Felix Hesu trespassed across Turner's land, triggering a shootout. Now, a coroner's jury went out to the site, and when they went out there, there was still snow on the ground, and the horse hoof tracks, the tracks left by glass, the tracks left by the sheep herder, the ammunition shells found on the ground, all collaborated Charlie Glass's story. So he was acquitted of that murder. He would go on working in western Colorado and eastern Utah on behalf of Turner for the next 16 years before suffering an untimely demise. Following a poker game and drinks in Utah, Glass took off with his compatriots in good spirits to head to another game. Unknown to him, these men were the cousins of the bass sheep herder he had shot and killed. And they drive to this game in Cisco, but Glass doesn't make it to the game. Instead, there's a car accident and Charlie Glass is found dead due to a broken neck. The legitimacy of this is still mired in questions as nobody else suffered injuries aside from Glass. Was it revenge? Had his past caught up to him? We'll never know the answers to those questions, but we do know this. At the time, Fruta Cemetery wouldn't allow black people to be buried in the cemetery. And the Turners had enough pull that they put Charlie in one of their family plots. This holds even more significance when you consider that Fruta was a sundown town well into the 1950s. At the time that Charlie Glass was, was working on the range, if you were not white, you had to be out of Fruta by 6 o'clock, nor were you allowed to be buried in the cemetery. Charlie Glass came in and broke both those rules and both those laws and set a new standard moving forward. Fitting that the rambling cowboy continue to be a trailblazer even in death. Reporting first on the Western Slope, I'm Antonio Clark for CARIX 5 News. You may have heard about a local hotel called the Melrose after a famous ghost hunting show featured it in one of its episodes. But historian Dave Fischel told us the hotel has an even more intriguing secret past you probably never heard. It was just the first, one of the f first black owned businesses built uh, in Western Colorado and it was always a small hotel. Digging into Grand Junction's past lays bare both the best and worst of us. Austin Sack uncovered how the Ku Klux Klan arrived in Grand Junction on the heels of a prominent businessman whose legacy still draws praise and condemnation. Colorado was maybe about the fourth or fifth uh, in Klan membership in the nation. Longtime local historian Dave Fischel describes how the Klan's reach extended far beyond the South to Colorado. It was all over. One prominent historic name linked, though not definitely to the Klan, was long ago Daily Sentinel publisher Walter Walker. He helped get the college here. He helped get the airport here. He, you know, did a lot of things, but he, do, he did, you know, push for the Klan. Robert Allen Goldberg authored a definite book called Hooded Empire on the Klan in Colorado. In it, he confirms Walker appealed to bring the Klan to Mesa County in 1924, mostly as a social club, though one that was racially teamed. Walker published articles promoting the Klan and a racially charged, demeaning movie, The Birth of a Nation. The two newspapers in town promoted it, but especially the Sentinel ran big ads saying if you're going to be a big, a good American, you need to come and see this movie. By the late 1920s, all of that changed. Probably because he lost a vote to be the local Klan leader, uh, he all pretty quickly turned against the Klan. Walker went on to denounce the Klan and fund a charity for poor and minority children. As a former U.S. Senator, he pushed for improved transportation and education in Western Colorado. The airport and Colorado Mesa University soccer field once carried his name, but Walker's legacy still cuts both ways. We decided to revisit Walter Walker. Did he then subsequently turn around and help chase the Klan out? Yes. But to honor him with the naming of a, of a field? Maybe not appropriate. So he got to give him both sides of the story. He, he probably helped bring him in to some degree, but all of a sudden he's got front page editorials about how terrible they are. We debated, like I said, for hours and hours and hours going back and forth about, but you just come back to bringing the Klan to the community. That's, that's a big deal. That's a big, very big deal.
though Lincoln Park managers ultimately removed Walker's name from the field, his statue in downtown remains a reminder of a man with two very different legacies. Right now with Papa Murphy's, we've got a great deal. Which means I make more great pizza. It's not an I thing, Dad. It's a we thing. Get 25% off after spending $25 when you order online. Order now at PapaMurphy's.com. Courage, the choice and willingness to confront agony, pain, and uncertainty. The mental or moral strength to persevere. It is possible to focus on the positive when your mental health might be suffering, even if it takes a little courage. Focus on the now, find something positive in the moment, and understand sometimes just to live is an act of courage. If you need to talk, call 1-800-273-TALK. Or text TALK to 38255. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. He sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. Basically, he had to relearn everything. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey. At Papa Murphy's, we need seriously, chop seriously, and shred seriously. Because we're serious about Tuesdays, even if you're not. Every Tuesday, get a large pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's, change the way you pizza. The local group who revived Walter Walker's legacy to question whether his name should be honored in a local sports field actually came together long before that effort. They found a shared purpose after a modern-day tragedy shook the entire nation. KREX5's Chance Dicklin explains. Nine minutes and 29 seconds. That time mark is forever engraved in the minds of people not only on U.S. soil but across the world. The brutal murder of George Floyd under the knee of a Minneapolis police officer sparked outrage across the country but also here on the western slope. When that happened, we felt motivated to just get out and kind of let our voices be heard. Reporter Antonio Clark says Floyd's murder motivated him and hundreds more to stand up. We did a couple marches. We started seeing some of the like support that we were getting, people coming out and emboldened us. One of them being to have Walter Walker have that field being renamed by the school, uh, starting a task force. They addressed the local city council about Walker Field, but also so much more. So then we started a nonprofit called Right and Wrong. Longtime activist and founder of Black Citizens and Friends, David Combs, also decided it was time to take a stand. The Grand Valley Task Force came about because of, mainly because of what happened with George Floyd. It was kind of a uh, awakening for a lot of people. The task force members wound up going separate ways to focus on specific issues, but their passion to spread the word, take initiative, and address racial inequities continues every day. Part of that for me was running for the school board. Another part of it was being involved in uh, uh, Black History Month. Another part is putting on a Juneteenth celebration. I asked Clark if stepping up as a leader in our community opened new doors. It just let us get to talk to people that we never would have been able to talk to. Uh, kind of helped us get connected with people that move things in, in the city. Task Force did what it was set up to do in terms of shine a light on areas that were typically overlooked. But something that hasn't changed for decades is racism. In a recent D-51 school board meeting, a teacher complained that someone circulated Valentine's with George Floyd's picture that said, quote, you take my breath away, end quote. Discrimination as a whole is directed at African Americans, the Latinx community, the LGBTQ community. And what people have to understand is there's something that we all have in common. We are not like others. But in the same sense, we are just like you. We're no different than you. I think there's absolutely racism in the Valley. I think there's racism throughout the country. And I've had a lot of great things happen to me, but I've also had situations where I felt like I was uh, looked unfavorably because of my skin color. 
A lot of work has been done to raise awareness in the Valley, but Combs says there's still a good deal of work left to do. You don't have to be a person of color to step up. You don't have to be a person of color to advocate for what is right. Coming up tonight on KREX 5. CMU hosted the Special Olympics Colorado Western Regional Basketball Tournament. We'll hear from coaches and a competitor tonight at 6. Plus, state lawmakers have proposed a bill for students to receive free meals year-round. We'll hear from local officials tonight. And taking a look at our America's Mattress Tower Cam Clear Skies to kick off the weekend, your full weather forecast is coming up. There's been an accident. A distracted driver put texting over safety. Your injuries, medical bills, and loss of income can last a long time, even a lifetime. Our job is to secure justice that will protect you and your family, if necessary, for the rest of your life. Killian Davis, justice for you. Some things in your medicine cabinet are more dangerous than others. When it comes to prescription drugs, opioid pain medicines can be addictive and even deadly. Half the people who misuse prescription pain medicines get them from a friend or family member. Be part of the solution. Go through your medicine cabinets, drawers, anywhere you keep unused opioid pills, patches, or syrups. Find out how to dispose of them safely. Visit FDA.gov slash drug disposal. Oh boy, we've got some exciting news. It's out with the old and with the new. Changes are coming to the Carry X5 News Studio. We're getting a whole new set. In the coming days, we'll be hard at work getting all the pieces in place. Stay tuned for what's to come. And thanks for watching Carry X5 News, first on the Western Slope. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once famously said, we must build dikes of courage to hold back the flood of fear, a quote that still holds weight today. Demetrius Gamble spoke with a local business owner who embraced that motto and opened up a local barbershop. Christopher Maddox is the owner of Distinguished Barber Studio near 3rd and North Avenue in Grand Junction. The Memphis native found his way here by way of working on the Union Pacific Railroads, but told me as I sat down to get a haircut, the slow work rate wasn't for him. I had to make a career change, and one day I was sitting at home, man, and a, a barbershop commercial for school came on. And I mean, it, it just sounded like the commercial screamed at me, you know what I'm saying? The further Chris got into barber school, the more his goals grew. So I originally planned on just being a barber, but as time progressed in school, it grew to a shock. Traveling to Delta for the Technical College of the Rockies, formerly known as the Montrose Community College and back, finally paid off. Distinguished Barber Studio opened its doors for the first time October 6, 2017. But like they say, the first cut is the deepest. Pretty, uh, overwhelming actually because I just got out of school uh, and was kind of new to the Bible world. One thing Chris didn't worry about was if the community would embrace him. I, wa I wasn't worried about the people because I'm, I'm pretty good dealing with people. All the people skills in the world won't bring you customers, but a dedicated owner might. I was open every day, man. It took me being here a lot and actually taking each client and, and, and making the best of them, and they spread the word around. I never advertised this place, so we stay busy, man. His barbershop was doing well and had great reception from the community. Then a global pandemic happened. And the COVID hit, so we were shut down for a couple of months. But you know what they say, tough times don't last, tough people do. As soon as that was over, man, everything just went back to normal. Maddox worked the floor alongside his barbers and his message always, the customers come first. Just treat the people right. 
because they will grow with you. Along with growing your clientele, Maddox believes you have to put in the legwork no matter your race or business. Grit and grind and getting it and going after it every day and going hard and be determined. And that's why I think this business has been successful because I, I really have passion for it. A passion that makes his business a cut above the rest. Reporting first on the Western Slope, I'm Demetrius Gamble, KREX 5 News. Chris's business has been so successful, he may expand beyond Mesa County and open a mobile barbershop. Equality gets no timeouts or tryouts or second chances. February reminds us we can change our circumstances. We give thanks to the athletes who took big risks, who beat the odds despite being eyeballs because of their skin. When silence is comfortable, speaking out is an act of resistance. This is the month we remember. But more importantly, we dream of something bigger. Yes, women can have it all, including heart attacks. Know the signs. Heart disease is the number one killer of women. Get heart checked. KREX 5, Fox 4, and local restaurants invite you to be our guest. Get $50 in gift certificates for just $25. Go to westernslopenow.com and click on Be Our Guest to see what great offers are available. Certificates are limited, so check back often. Save money and support local business with Be Our Guest only at KREX 5 and Fox 4. Visit the Be Our Guest page at westernslopenow.com. When it comes to black history, one beacon of light still shines bright. Handy Chapel turns 130 years old this year. I talked with longtime church members about the chapel's lasting legacy. Handy Chapel stands as a pillar for the Grand Valley's black community built in 1892, 10 years after Grand Junction was found. Black residents originally attended the first Methodist church, but wanted a church of their own. Having a black church that is part of that community is very important. Pastor Harry Butler's granddaughter, Christine West, researched the chapel story while on assignment and was blown away by what she discovered about her childhood church. I didn't realize this was the same had the same bricks, was on the same property as it originally began back in 1892. Sunday morning is still the most segregated time of the week, but Handy Chapel has become more blended and colorful over the years. Handy Chapel was originally built to be a beacon of light for black people in the Grand Valley. 130 years later, people of all colors come here to worship Jesus. Families and descendants of original members help Handy Chapel remain active. A grandson of founding member Josephine Dickey follows her example and keeps the church abundant in faith. We realize that every single one of us behind our eyes is a soul, a soul that is so important to Christ. And so we're here to just help souls come to the source of ourselves. Storms brewed when someone tried to sell Handy Chapel in the late 1970s. A lawsuit canceled that since the black citizens of the Green Valley have owned Handy Chapel since 1883 at the cost of one dollar. The owners are still getting their money's worth after all this time. Still stands today is amazing and hasn't been torn down, hasn't you know, it still has church services and that we were able to restore it and my grandpa got to see it before he passed away. Handy Chapel is not only on the National Register of Historic Places and one of Colorado's most endangered places, it's been the ultimate destination for Grand Junction's Martin Luther King Jr. Day March every year since 1982. The church is the only original Grand Junction church building still standing, so current members want to preserve its legacy. I'd like to continue to preserve Handy Chapel and eventually take the church house that's next door and repair it and turn it into 
a Black History Museum. This is an example of Black excellence to appreciate before, during, and after each Black History Month. Reporting first on the Western Slope, Cora Dickey, KREX5 News. It's been too hard living. To say noble gift, to be brown all round, like the strongest things that make up this earth, like the mountain's grave, and grand even the very land, even like the trunks of trees, even oaks to be like these. It's been a Adoption creates families, and my family took a chance on me. My name is Chance Stickland, and I'm adopted. Right now, there are more than 30 kids in Mesa County that are free and clear for adoption. And did you know that 90% of adopted children have positive feelings about their adoptions? You can take a chance and change the life of a child. If you've ever considered adoption or becoming a foster parent, find out more at fosteradoptmesacounty.org. Ernie Johnson and Charles Barkley welcoming you back to Susan's Cubicle here in Accounts Payable. All that work, just terrible for her pasta and circulation. Are you kidding me? She set herself a reminder to get out of that chair and move. Uh-oh, it's Karen from the IT department. But Susan tosses her a no-look wave. Susan's putting on a clinic. Stand up to cancer and Optum want to help you reduce your risk for cancer. Visit takeahealthystand.org. It was okay, it's not, it, it, it's so hard because I had been a single mom, like I said, forever and just struggling to do things on my own and I was going backwards. So to be able to say, okay, yes, I need to reach out and it, it was okay. It was okay to do that. So I would just say, don't hesitate. Don't be scared of me. Yes. No. <laughs> or, or me, apparently. Because <laughs> I like people to feel wanted. Watch the KREX5 Golden Apple Awards. Each month, we recognize Montrose County School District's outstanding teachers, principals, custodians, librarians, nurses, and anyone in your child's school who makes a difference. Submit your nominations today by visiting westernslopenow.com. We'll feature the winners on KREX5 News. The Montrose Golden Apple Awards are sponsored by TEI Rock Drills and Montrose Donut and Deli. Thank you all so much for watching and for joining us as we look back and honor the incredible people and black history of Western Colorado. Good night, everyone. It's been a long, long